Good kitten internet. So one of the things I was asked to record in my Vita series was how do I run emulators and be able to record them properly? It's apparently something that's very difficult to do in OBS and I kind of picked up on it naturally. So what I wanted to show you today was how to, well, do a Let's Play using emulators on PC, obviously, because I don't know why you would do a Let's Play for an emulator on a console. That would be a little weird. So I'm going to be focusing on the PS2. This works across all sorts of emulators, as you can see a large number of emulators, like for instance my Wii emulator, my DOSBox emulator. I will actually be focusing on DOS and PC stuff in a different episode, so I'm not going to even bother covering that one right now. Uh, PS1 emulator, PSP emulator, Genesis emulator. I'm focusing on the PS2. So one of the things that you want to do is make sure you have a proper setup for this situation. What's a proper setup, you may ask? Well, the first thing that you need is the proper emulator. In my case, I'm using PCSX2. I'm not necessarily using the newest version, as you can tell over here. I haven't run PCSX2 in a while. Second thing you will need is a computer strong enough to be able to actually run some emulators plus the um, recording software. In my case, my computer is, well, how to put this politely, extremely powerful and horrible overkill for everything that I do. So here's some specs on the computer that I'm using. It is, in fact, it's actually running at higher than 4 gigahertz. I don't know why Windows keeps lying about that. Um, this is way more than you need for any form of Let's Plays, but it's actually really useful for upper level PC games and Let's Plays of that variety. Don't go this overkill. For a PS2, it's a little touchy because some PS2 games run really poorly and you need some pretty powerful hardware to run it properly. But really, any modern computer that's not a laptop is probably perfectly fine for something like this. Next thing you will need is a large enough screen resolution to be able to see what you're doing and also record at the same time. So normally I don't have my OBS inside of my screen real estate area that I'm showing. This is for demonstration purposes. What I actually have is a multi-monitor setup and some very large resolution monitors. If you can't tell what you're seeing on the screen right now, all of, you know, this, you're not even seeing my full screen or my full background or anything like that. This monitor is actually a 1440p monitor. I'll just give you an idea from Display Fusion. Um, so you're actually only seeing an area like that of my monitor. This is also, I have another monitor off to the left that you cannot see. Normally what I do is that I throw OBS off on the monitor to the left. If you have multiple monitors, this works great. If not, I highly recommend just having an area that you can put OBS or whatever screen recording software you're using off to the side as a confidence monitor. It's a technique that you learn quite a bit when it comes to presentations, when you do things on stage that are recorded, or alternately when you do things like for a video conference and things like that, you want to be able to watch yourself speak. And in this case, I use OBS. I'm pointing at it, that does not help. I use OBS for my confidence monitor, so what I normally do is I just move it off to the side on one of my other monitors. Yeah. You get the idea. So. In this case, I'm intentionally not going to move it off to the side. And bear with me, this is a little weird to record how you record things. Can't say I've ever done this before. Actually, I did this yesterday in a horribly failed version of this, then failed again today. It, it's complicated. So, next thing you will need is enough disk space to actually be able to do the recording. Now, how much disk space you need is dependent on how long you're recording for. If you're trying to retain the recordings or you're just deleting them after you upload them to YouTube or your video uploading platform of choice, or if you're trying to edit them afterward or things like that. For 1080p recording, which is what I'm demonstrating here, I have my encoding settings set to 3500 kilobits per second as a maximum bitrate. It will bounce below that and you can sort of see what it's recording at over here. Keep in mind audio is included with this so it's going to be a little bit higher. The reason why I use 3500 is actually because this is about what my upstream is so if I want to do Twitch or something like that, this is the most that I can pull off and actually have things function. If you're going to be recording at 1080p, I don't recommend going too much lower than 3 megabit. If you're doing PS2 games, you can easily record at something other than 1080p. 1080p is overkill, given that the PS2 is only, what, 480p at best, if I remember right? Might even be 360p. 
Anyway, you're not going to need to be worried too much about this for a PS2. Also, make sure that your recording location, which is here, you have enough disk space and enough memory to be able to record these things. I try to make sure that I have a minimum of 100 gig free in order to do recordings, but that's because I'm editing them after the fact. Editing takes a lot more disk space. Once more, I'm recording at 1080p. If you want to record less than that, just say 80 by 720, and then that's what it will record at. Alternately, what you can do, and this is actually what I do whenever I record things at lower, is that I actually do a downscale. The reason for this is that things look slightly better than actually recording at 720p, and I still have screen real estate to actually be able to see something. I've had really bad luck in actually recording at 720p and having things look right, but again, I have a really powerful machine. Also, disabling arrow. The only reason why I'm doing that right now is because I'm doing a monitor capture. Without disabling arrow, my frame rates plummet when doing a full monitor capture. You won't need to worry about that for recording PS2 games or anything like that, so I would keep this enabled if you can. Audio-wise, I'm using my headset as a microphone. I always do that whenever I stream or record videos on my desktop or anything like that, because my camera microphone, while really good, picks up a lot of the other sounds in the area. My headset mic, on the other hand, has really good noise canceling, so you can actually hear what I'm saying. The desktop audio device, I have it set to default. It's kind of a misnomer. I as you can see, this icon that I just dragged over here, I actually have a set of icons based off of which sound device I want to use at any one given point. I have three of them in this case because I have my desktop speakers that I normally use whenever I'm playing things without recording, I have my headset for when I am recording, and my soundbar for my TV that's off to the right. I don't use push to talk in this case, I just speak because I'm doing a let's play, I'm primarily speaking, I'm not trying to annotate a specific move. You might want to use push to talk, I don't know, that's entirely up to you. If you do want to use push to talk, or muting and unmuting microphones, or stopping starting streams, make sure you put in your keybound settings. And yes, this is a video that's specifically talking about using OBS for recording PS2 games. If you want to use XSplit, that's probably perfectly fine, I've heard good things about it, but I didn't have good luck when I was using it. Admittedly, I tried XSplit before I tried OBS, I know quite a bit more now than I did back then, so it might be useful. Uh, let's see, advanced settings, I don't really change a whole bunch of this other than making sure that I use multi-threaded optimizations because I have a very powerful machine. Uh, let's see, I'm not using quick sync. I do use the microphone noise gate, that way it will automatically drop volume if need be. Um, my microphone also automatically drops volume by itself. And the scene switcher, I don't really change anything, that's all cosmetic. So. This over here in the top right corner, uh, let's go ahead and run the game so I can show you how to set things up. Keep in mind, this is going to be a little weird because I'm recording my attempts at recording things. So I've already prepped a game, specifically everybody's favorite game, Katamari. And you can see right now, since I'm doing the desktop version, this does work. I don't necessarily recommend doing it this way, but it would work. Oh, the king of all cosmos. This is a little glitch because, well, I'm doing desktop recording and I'm, I've am i kind of paused and resumed this a lot. I think I started this particular game day before yesterday. Anyway, you get the idea. Um, when it comes to audio, and I highly recommend previewing this before recording, you'll want to make sure that the audio is... If you're recording a game... If you're recording a game that is not heavy in audio, as in you don't have to worry about voices and things like that, my recommendation is to decrease game volume below that of your microphone. That way they hear you speak. On the other hand, if you're trying to record the game and make sure you get all the voices and things like that, invert that. Make your microphone substantially quieter than the game itself. Maybe do some options in the game to remove the music or something like that to make it where you can be heard. Uh, reduce music volume. So what we want to do here is that we want to add this window where rather than doing a full desktop capture like we are now, we are going to go ahead and do what's called a game capture. So what we want to do is in this case we want to add a game capture. And you can call it what you want. I'm going to call this Katamari. making sure that you can read this. Now, if you're running PCX 
PCX app. If you're running PCSX2, you'd be very tempted to just use this right here, where you select the application and you select the one running. There's a very big problem with this, and this is probably where a lot of people have problems recording this at. The problem is that the way OBS selects an application is by the title. It is specifically looking for an application called, uh, with the title bar of GSDX pipe 512x448 pipe auto pipe interface interlaced field pipe limiter normal pipe FPS 59.90 pipe EE equals 9% pipe and so on and so on. The problem is if you look up here, my frame rate is bouncing quite a bit. It's limited at 60 frames per second because I told it to limit at 60 frames per second. Otherwise the game would probably be running at like 300 or I think I clocked it at 600 frames per second. My setup is a little ridiculous and Katamari is not exactly the most intense PS2 game in the world. This means that whenever the frame rate changes, it will lose the ability to actually capture the device. You don't want to do that. What you want to do instead, for any anything that you record that the title is not consistent, which are most Sony-based emulators, um, really most emulators in general, is that you want to use a hotkey instead. And PCSX2 actually uses F12 as a reserved key, so I'm going to go ahead and choose Control F12 instead. You'll also want to make sure that you have set stretching the image to the screen. The reason for this is that otherwise, when you actually capture it, OBS will actually give you horrible black borders around everything. It's terrible. I don't know why they do that, but I'm sure there's a good reason for it, just not for this purpose. So now that we've got that, let's go ahead and click OK, and then nothing happens. The reason being is that this is all the way in the back. So. This is something you probably want to see. Move to the top. And hit Control F12. And then crash OBS, or crash PCSX2. So this is actually what keeps happening to me. I think the reasoning for it is that I keep toggling back and forth between running it and not running it, and it really doesn't like that. So let's go ahead and try this again. All right, and control F12. Let's see what happens if I remove the monitor camps really fast. Hold on, I'll be right back. There we go. So let's go ahead and move the camera back in the top. To the top. I'm going to re-enable monitor capture really fast and move this to the top so you can see what I'm doing. And then if you hold down Alt and move this, I'm just going to capture that part. That way you can see OBS at least. So what I've done is that I've hit Control F12 on the uh, while the emulator is actually active. What this does is it lets OBS capture the window, not based off of the title bar, but based off of which one was the active application when you press that hotkey. That way this works quite a bit better, and you don't need to worry about, oh, I don't know, the frame rate changing immediately after you record this. By the way, this took me about three hours to figure out. It probably would have taken me about three seconds if I would have looked it up on the internet, but, you yeah, know, whatever. Other things to be concerned about. So... Make sure that you trim your video. This is something that's not really a technical problem, but it's something that, shall we say, is needed. To give you an idea, um, without trimming this video, I'm currently at around 16 minutes of my seventh take of this. It's kind of annoying. But I don't think anybody wants to watch me just do this over and over and over and over again. That's what outtakes for anyway. Um, you'll notice some graphical glitching. It's because I didn't set any of these settings to tweak Katamari in this case. Obviously, you'll want to make sure that this game works perfectly fine in the emulator when you do use PCSX2. They're just graphical glitches, so I didn't particularly care in this case. So, uh, are there any other questions? If so, leave them in the comments, because I'm reasonably good at this at this point. Uh, if you can see from my OBS setup, you'll notice that I have several things recorded. I even have Skyrim working on this perfectly fine. It's something I'm reasonably good at at this point. Move that off so you can actually see things. 
The only problem with this view is you can't see my cute kitties. My kitties are cute. So, I hope you have a good day, Internet. And I may be just rolling things up for a little while. I'll probably just actually you edit things. Yeah. In any case, good night, Internet. I will see you tomorrow.